transit to us in passing through a time away and our transit out to the moon. And it's uh, rather odd to see it floating like this in, uh, in Odyssey while it's playing uh, the theme from 2001. April 13, 1970. The mood could only be described as relaxed. Apollo 13, man's fifth lunar mission. The third scheduled to land on the moon continued its tranquil coast. This is the crew of Apollo 13. We should be running there. A nice evening, and uh, we're just about ready to close out our inspection of Aquarius and get back for a pleasant evening at Odyssey. Good night. 13, we've got one more item for you when you get a chance. We'd like you to uh, stir up your cryo tanks. In addition, uh, I have a shaft and trunnion okay. for a look at the Comet Bennett if you need it. Okay. Stand by. Okay, yes, uh, sir, we've had a problem here. This is Houston. Say again, please. Yes, sir. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. We've had a main B bus undervolt. Roger, main B undervolt. Okay, stand by, 13. We're looking at it. And we had a pretty large bang associated with the um, caution and warning there. And as I recall, main B was the one that uh, had an amp spike on it uh, once before. In the interim here, uh, we're starting to uh, go ahead and button up the tunnel again. April 11th, 1970. Launch day. The crew of Apollo 13. Jim Lovell, commander and veteran of three previous missions. He had orbited the moon Christmas 1968 on Apollo 8. Fred Hayes, his first time up, lunar module pilot. Jack Swigert, command module pilot. Three days ago, he was on the backup crew. Now he replaced Ken Mattingly. Mattingly had been dropped from the mission because he had been exposed to German measles. He would watch the launch from Houston's mission control. Auto sequence initiated flight. Roger. Flight booster. Go. S4B pre-press complete. Roger. Flight booster. S1C pre-press complete. We're on internal power and we we'll go. Roger. How's it look, Econ? You got your space. That's good. Flight. Okay. MCC record us to flight speed. Ignition flight. Roger. Roger. Clock start flight. Roger. Let's just go. All in it. Roger. Okay, Fado, has it look? Looks good here, flight. Good agreement. Okay, boost that, Eva. That's one C looks good, flight. Okay, Capcom, we'll go on the ground. Okay, we'll go at one, Capcom. Get really good, flight. Roger. Booster, how do you look? We look good, flight. We'll go. Okay, Fado. We'll go, flight. Looks good here. Got it. Looks good, flight. Okay, Econ, GNC. Looks good, flight. Looks good, flight. Okay, Sergeant. It looks fine. Through Max, you and we'll go, flight. Roger, please. And go for staging, Capcom. Confirm and board out, flight. Roger. Staging, flight. Roger. Flight fighter trajectory confirmed staging. Roger. Flight booster then board out was way early. Okay. Our flight confirmed, uh, number five engine down. Roger. Booster, you don't see any problem with that, though, do you? Uh, negative, not right now, flight. All the other engines are go. The next step in the routine of lunar flight was to burn out of Earth orbit toward the moon, then pull free of the third stage and dock with the lunar module, Aquarius. At the controls of the command module, Odyssey, Jack Swigert. We're hard docked, Houston. Right here, understand hard dock, good deal. They pulled Aquarius away from the Saturn third stage, the S-4B. Okay, I can, uh, I can see the S-4B now at the hatch window. Odyssey and Aquarius moved away from Earth toward the moon. Okay, yes, uh, yes. we've had a problem here. Five guns. Go, guidance. We've had a hardware restart. I don't know what it was. Okay. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Is that a main B bus undervolt? You see an AC bus undervolt there, guidance? Or, uh, ECOM? Negative flight. I believe the crew reported it. We got a main B undervolt. We may have had an instrumentation problem, flight. Roger. 
And we had a pretty large bang associated with the um, caution and warning there. Uh, the sensation I had uh, that I had felt a vibration accompanying the bang, uh, not a large vibration or shudder. Is there any uh, kind of leads we can give them? Are we looking at instrumentation? Have we got a real problem or what? We're reading uh, zero N2 pressure in fuel cell one and 13 PSI on uh, fuel cell three O2 pressure. Okay, Barrett, what do you want to do? Open circuit fuel cell one and three? That's for important. Shut down uh, uh, the reactants valve and I uh, ask for a reconfirmation since uh, when you do that, it's sort of irreversible. If you shut one of these things down, they. Uh, uh, only can be restarted from uh, ground support equipment. Yeah, that's, that's because of the AC. And it looks to me, looking out the uh, hatch, that we are venting something. We are, uh, we are venting something out uh, into the uh, into space. Okay, let's everybody think of the kind of things we'd be venting. GNC, you got anything that looks abnormal in your system? Negative light. How about you, Ecom? You see anything that, uh, with the instrumentation you got, that could be venting? That's a firm flight. Let me look at the system flight as far as the venting is concerned. Okay, let's start scanning. Here is a bulletin from ABC News. The Apollo 13 spacecraft has had a serious power supply malfunction that could cause the lunar landing mission to be terminated early. I assume you've called in your backup ECOMs? Flight, say again. Have you called in your backup ECOMs now? See if we can get some more brain power in this we thing? we got one here. Roger. At the moment, the astronauts are continuing to try to isolate their trouble. A late report says the spacecraft now is operating on battery power alone. All unnecessary equipment is being turned off. Okay, now let's everybody keep cool. We got the uh, limb still attached. The limb spacecraft's good, so if we need uh, to get back home, we got a limb to do a good portion of it with. Okay, let's make sure that we don't do anything that's going to blow our CSM electrical power with the batteries or that will cause us to lose the main or the uh, fuel cell number two. Okay, we want to keep the O2 and that kind of stuff working. We'd like to have RCS, but we got the command module system, so we're in good shape if we need to get home. Let's solve the problem, but let's not make it any worse by guessing. My concern was increasing all the time. It went from, I wonder what this is going to do to the landing, to I wonder if we can get back home again. Okay, Com, I'm coming back to you. Flight. Go ahead. I think the best thing we can do right now is start a power down. Right about then, it, uh, it was quite apparent to me that it was just a question of time that the command module was going to be dead. You don't want to get fuel cell pumps off, do you? We can do that on fuel cell number one flight. Okay, well, let's make sure we don't blow the whole mission. Well, the thing that concerns me is starting is throwing equipment. We, we had a problem. We don't know the cause of the problem. Flight, I, I've got a feeling we've lost two fuel cells. I hate to put it that way, but uh, I, I don't know why we've lost them. It doesn't all tag up. Network from flight. Flight network. Bring me up another computer in the RTCC, will you? Uh, we got uh, one machine on the RTCC, and we got dual CPs downstairs. Okay, I want another machine up in the RTCC, and I want a bunch of guys capable of running D-logs down there. Roger that. What all this means is only speculation at this point. First, though there has been some tumbling or rotation of the spacecraft, the astronauts do not appear to be in any immediate danger. I'll tell you what, uh, GNC, can you get somebody in the back room to try to figure out what the equivalent delta V is we're getting? so that we can see if we can backtrack to see if we can figure out what's venting. Roger, we'll give it a try, Flight. Okay. When I looked up and saw both uh, oxygen pressures, one absolutely zero and the other one going down, uh, it, it dawned on me, and I'm sure Jack and Fred about the same time, that we were indeed in serious trouble. The only way to survive the situation was to transfer to the limb Flight Econ. Go ahead, Econ. The pressure in O2 tank one is all the way down to 297. You better think about getting in the LEM or using the LEM systems. I'd say this is as serious a uh, situation as we have ever had in manned space flight. We've always called the LEM a good lifeboat under those circumstances. If at any time in the mission, however, the LEM had separated and we had gotten ourselves into a rendezvous situation or uh, the, the command module being around the moon, then what you state is absolutely true. It would, it would be a fatal situation. Tell me you from flight. 
Go ahead, flight. I want you to get some guys figuring out minimum power in the limb to sustain life. The accident had occurred 200,000 miles from Earth. Lovell, Swigert, and Hayes rode in the lunar module attached to a lifeless command module. Apollo 13 had started as a mission of scientific exploration. It was now a matter of survival. Since the command module was dead, except for the oxygen and power hoarded for re-entry, the guidance platform of Aquarius, designed to land on and take off from the moon, would have to be used. The first milestone, and I consider this after the accident, I guess, more or less the survival now, the first milestone was to get alignment on the limb platform. Alignments are important, you know, because uh, without knowing exactly which way the attitude of a spacecraft is in space, there's no way to tell how to burn or how to use the engines of that spacecraft to get the, pro the proper trajectory to come home. The position we are now on the Earth-Moon plane, we have to go around the, the, uh, the moon to get back if we're going to use the dips engine. You would have had enough capability with the SPS engine, but of course we don't dare use that now. So we have to go up to the back side of the moon and come back. To get into the correct orbit around the moon, the crew had burned out of a trajectory that would automatically bring them back to Earth. They would have to get back onto a safe course toward Earth. He needs to put his uh, throttle to men also, Flight. Throttle to men? Yes, he's at 29% now, roughly. This maneuver again was uh, completed on time and because it was a manual burn we had a three-man operation Jack would uh, take care of the time he'd tell us when to light off the engine when to stop it Fred handled the uh, pitch maneuver I handled the roll, roll maneuver and I pushed the buttons to start and stop the engines Aquarius and you go for the burn forty percent okay Aquarius you're looking good The first problem was solved. They were back on the path to Earth. But there were many other problems to be solved. From a building at Houston's Manned Spacecraft Center, systems experts coordinated the coast-to-coast -coast effort to get the crew back. One of the big problems was consumables. There would be enough to eat and drink. But in space, there are other factors. Oxygen to breathe electrical power to keep the spacecraft alive, water to cool the equipment and keep it operating. What we'll be doing till we get them back on the water is concentrating on everything that is de their, their lives are dependent upon at the moment rather than worrying about the accident because there's nothing we can do about that now. This, it appears at the present time that everything is under control and that uh, we have a safe situation at the moment. Hey, I want to say you guys are doing real good work. So are you guys, Jack. We are about 70 hours from home, and uh, we think we have uh, uh, the situation in control. We've projected the uh, consumables, as I've described, and uh, we have a plan for carrying out the rest of the mission, but uh, uh, there's going to be no relaxation at all as far as that goes from now until splash. There was a key decision to be made before Apollo 13 went behind the moon where to bring them down. Their present course would take them to the Indian Ocean, where recovery would be difficult. A burn to bring them home